Uh, to me, it's so, so much bigger and wider than, than electronic or EDM. Talk about you know, your approach to making this record versus your previous records. Um, yeah, I mean, I was on tour in 2010, um, uh, US-wide 50-state tour, or probably 47 states, I don't know. And I walked off stage one day, and I, I don't know what it was about that show, but I just, I was kind of like down about it. It was like a fun show, and it was great, but I was like, man, this shit needs to get stepped up, you know what I mean? Like, I need to step things up for myself, or mm -hmm. I'm going to get bored, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. And so, um, for some reason, just right in that moment, like, a light bulb flicked over my head, and, I, you know, I was flicked on over my head, and it all made sense. I knew what I had to do, you know? I was like, I can't, I have to go back, 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 back to the very beginning of, of uh, and, and do what I do, keep my sound and my style, and evolve it simultaneously, but also just do the unthinkable, which was, you know, make 60 records to sample from myself. And that was, that's the whole thing. And that's what I've been talking about so mm -hmm. much. And mm -hmm. that's what that little trailer was about, mm -hmm. was about the process. Mm -hmm. And that's, and it's so unique and it's mm -hmm. a huge part of the record and I want people to see that. But, but at the same time, it's, it doesn't, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if I use all analog gear and tape machines and whatever, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. it, it just, it's got to be dope music. And mm -hmm. so, like, what I want to say first and foremost is that I made a record that I'm proud of. Like, I'm really proud of it. And the fact that, that every piece of music that was on those pieces of vinyl was composed on the fly, you know, with the musicians, with the engineer, and it was just this, like, non-stop process of working with cr other creative people and, 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 and getting on the same page and creating um, what I call breaks, you know, mm -hmm. which is the section of a song that I look for, you know, mm -hmm. on a record. You know, when I would dig through records, I would pick them up and I would look across the record in the right light and you can see where it gets quieter or where it gets a little smoother and you can you can actually visually see the breaks if if you know mm -hmm. if you if you're an experienced digger and and know the know the little tricks and then you 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 know you throw it on your little battery powered turntable or your you know whatever you have and you put it on that part and it and you can dig a lot quicker anyway I was trying to make breaks um, with these with these virtuoso musicians which which was crazy and, and, and just like in Nashville, all those musicians were so skeptical of me. Mm -hmm. And every musician I worked with was like, where's the sheet music? Like, what the hell am I doing here? And I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> D minor into G minor, <laughs> I think. And then, and they'd be like, all right. And they'd start jamming out. I'd be like, whoa, 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 way too much. Just play the chord. And they'd play the chord and I'd be like, no, play the chord over here. And they'd play the chord over here, and I'd be like, no, play this fingering of the chord. And they'd be like, okay. And I'm like, now just play it on the snare beat. And they'd play, I'd play it softer. And I'm like, okay, use the sustain pedal, let it resonate. And you know, I'd work with every little piece of each break until it sounded perfectly, because I'm a timbre nuance freak. Like, I'm mm -hmm. looking for the perfect moment. I can have a keyboard player play a single chord 500 times and I will know when I hear the perfect one. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Even though it's the same thing, it's just the little differences that make that make things special and make things, make pieces of music uh, something that I want to work with and sample. And so essentially, I was going into the studio trying to write pieces of music from different time periods different genres, <laughs> different places in the world, but not only that, trying to, trying to write the, the best of it or mm -hmm. something comparable to the best of it. Something, because that's ultimately, if I were doing the record in my, with my past production process, I would be 
taking the best moment from an artist's entire career <laughs> to work with uh -huh. and mix it with a bunch of best moments from other artists' uh -huh. entire careers uh -huh. to make a song that that is now and future and the last hundred years all mm. at the same time. Mm. And and in hindsight I found that that like that makes so much sense. Like that's that's what I strive for in my music, even though I really never knew it while I was while I was doing it. So let me ask you. It's, let me see if I get this in my head. So in the past, it's it's easy for me to understand. You're grabbing bits and pieces of stuff that was existing, but this was all original. Yes. Right. Yes. All not written down. This it sounds to me like these guys were helping you extract some musical landscape out of your head and put it down on tape. Fair comment? Mm, not Were you telling completely. them, okay, here's the arrangement and here's kind of what I'm looking for? I literally made, well, asked these musicians to sign a piece of paper that said, I'm not going to write anything, right? And sometimes some of my friends would improvise a little thing, mm -hmm. but I was, at, I, was, I was saying, don't improvise. <coughs> I was mm -hmm. saying, play what I tell you to play and uh -huh. that's it. Uh -huh. And... Um, you know, a lot of musicians were like, of course, that's all I'm going to do. If, you know, if I'm not getting points or, and royalties on your record, I'm not going to write anything for you. And I, and I didn't want that. Yeah. I didn't want people writing music or improvising their style. I wanted them to come in and play what I heard in my head. And so that process of going through to each musician and um, uh, working with them on just the little nuances of each chord and each strum and and even the way you know Adam would that Adam Deitch the drummer mm -hmm. who's like he worked with you previously. drummed on the whole he was the drummer mm -hmm. on the whole record uh, he you know him and I were really on the same wavelength and uh, and there were a couple musicians like that Eric Krasno Brian Coogan um, Ben Jaffe anyway and I would play bass uh, a lot of the times, or keys, and and have a mic where I could conduct the band. Once everybody got their part right, their melody right, their the way they picked the strings right, or whatever they were playing, then then we would roll tape, mm -hmm. and I would either be playing bass or some weird instrument like a marxophone or something mm -hmm. like that. And, and be conducting it at the same time. Like, all right, bass and drums, out, you know? All right, you know, just duet, B3 and, and guitar strums, you know? Mm. Like, take it back, all right, half time, you know? Mm. And we go through the whole thing, and then it would last six to 20 minutes, and mm. then we'd have it, and we'd go on. And the whole time I was I was stressing about what we were gonna do next, because <laughs> I'm paying these musicians all this money, I'm like, man, I gotta, I'm like playing one piece of music, thinking about, all right, what the hell am I gonna do next? You know, in between playing, directing, and, and trying to write something in my head for when we were done with this piece. It was, yeah, well, you, it was a you, crazy process. I,